I have a weird fascination with cheapo no-name brands of cassette tapes such as Magnasonic, K-Tape, Tone Master, and Irish Series 2000. So when I saw this brand it really caught my interest. Computron. Originally sold in a bag of three. Unfortunately there's only two left. Original price was $2.29. Made in Hong Kong. Number 1390. These are 90 minute cassettes. They claim to be high output, low noise. And they did not include cases or cards. Just the cassettes. With a name like Computron in this wonderful early 1980s digital style font, it instantly makes you think of two things. One is obviously computers. It's the 1980s. It's the 1980s. And guess what? Guess what? Computers. Computers mainframes. Scuzzy ports. Dust. And the next is the movie Tron, which due to copyright reasons I can't show you any clips of, but I can show you a couple of computer games that were inspired by it, such as Novatron for the IBM PC and Beam Rider by Activision. And I looked it up and the trademark for Computron was filed in September 1982 while the movie Tron came out in July 1982. So gee, I wonder where they got their inspiration from. And with the name Computron, it's obvious to think that these tapes were designed for use of computers. After all, it was the early 1980s and cassette tapes were one of the main formats that people used to save computer data on. And there were a lot of dedicated computer cassettes available at that time but they're normally in much shorter lengths like 10 or 20 minutes while these are 90 minutes and aside from the name Computron there's nothing to indicate that these were designed for use with computers so I did a little more digging and it turns out that Computron was a trademark of the Arrow Trading Company and they used it on products such as telephones and radios and 8-track players and cassette players but not on any computer equipment that I can find. So were these cassettes designed for humans or computers? Or the combination of both Gary Newman? Taking a look at the cassette itself, it's very light and rather rattly. And the tape itself is a dark brown with a matte finish. Not the highest quality I've ever seen, but far from the worst. For my first test, I typed a small basic program into my Tandy Color Computer 3. And then I'm going to try saving it onto this Computron cassette and then loading it back into the computer and see if that works. Here's the program I typed in. Now I'm going to put in the Computron cassette. Now I'll type C save to save the program to cassette. And that's done. Now I will rewind it to before the beginning of the program. And that was it. Then I'll turn the computer off and then back on again to make sure the program is completely cleared out of memory. So now I'll type C load and press play on the cassette recorder. And that's it. It loaded the program from cassette. And there it is. Let's see if it runs. And it does. So the Computron cassette worked for saving and loading a computer program to cassette. So the Computron cassette is fit for computers, but is it fit for humans? For that test I'll switch from using a cassette recorder designed for computers to the same basic model except designed for recording the human voice. Here we go, recording the human voice on the Computron cassette. Just stick it in and hit record. This is my first test of recording my voice on the Computron cassette from 1982. That was a rather noisy rewind. And here's the playback. This is my first test of recording my voice on the Computron cassette from 1982. The year of hollow notes, Depeche Mode, and the VHS versus Beta Format War. Let's see how good this cassette sounds, recording my voice through the built-in microphone of this realistic 
CTR 75 cassette tape recorder. Now here's a test of using an external microphone with the Computron cassette and the realistic tape recorder so we can get a better recording without all that motor noise using a Radio Shack external microphone. And let's see how this sounds. So far so good, but the ultimate test will be recording music on this cassette. For the music recording test, I don't want to use something really high-end because a really good cassette recorder can make even the cheapest tape sound okay, but obviously I don't want to use something very poor quality either. So I'm going to use my new TACW1200 deck, which I think is a good midpoint between those two extremes. It cannot record with Dolby noise reduction, but let's be honest, anybody buying this kind of cassette tape in 1982 wouldn't have owned a deck with Dolby anyway. So put it in. And I'll set my levels rather conservatively, peaking at 0 dB, but not any higher than that. And I'm ready to make my recording. And logically enough, for a tape named Computron, the track I'm using is Slugbug's Computers Again. Well, that's pretty much what I expected. It obviously didn't sound great, but it didn't sound that terrible either. It lost a lot of level and high end compared to what I was putting onto it. But considering that it's almost 40 years old, it had relatively few dropouts. Overall, for what was a very cheap tape back in 1982, I think it did an okay job. So that's the Computron cassette tape from 1982. Better for computers than humans, but usable by both.